Because you're just curious. You're going to click the button. You're going to investigate. If someone gives you a link, you're going to go beyond that link to what else is next, what else is next. And, and that, is, that is very key in the world that we live in, interactive communications. Now, the whole point of it is that content rules, and that's what PR people are really good at. There can be IT people that are trying to be social media strategists, nothing wrong with them. There can be, uh, what's another category where people come from? The IT area, uh, a lot of people come from maybe journalism, I guess you would say, where content does rule. So if you're going to take someone to be a social media strategist, you do need to know computers, but not as much as you need to know content, because content rules. If you don't have this book or haven't heard of this book, you really get it. And the reason why, because everything is now about search, search marketing. So inbound marketing is another good book to get. Anybody ever heard of HubSpot? HubSpot.com? Mm -hmm. Facebook, mm -hmm. okay, HubSpot.com. They have a cool uh, mm -hmm. YouTube channel, too. They, they do. do. Uh, but this was by the, uh, the owner of HubSpot. And that's really, people don't want to be sold as much as they want to be, uh, have part of the conversation. They want to be part of the solution. They want to actually find you, and they want to think, kind of like in a husband and wife situation where a wife will suggest something to a husband. They want, to, they want the husband, the wife would want the husband to think that it was his idea, <laughs> when really she suggested it, but there's just a way, a psychology of doing that. And so... Inbound marketing, or they can even call it like attraction marketing, is very, very key in any type of PR or that you're doing. <coughs> now, I pulled off the internet, and Jennifer um, works at General Motors, and uh, everybody comes in their own circle how they end up in social media, because it's new. Social media is new, so it's not like you went to Wayne State University and majored in social media. It's not, it's not a major yet. Right? So everybody's coming from all these different things, an English bag, journalism, PR, whatever, whatever, design. Some people come from web design, that was the other one I was thinking, you know, where they're artistic, and so web designers are now doing a lot of social media. But I'll read a little bit about what it is that, because I know when I was in school, one of the things that I wanted to know most about was how to get a job. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yeah, it's like, like, still true. This <laughs> is like, am I going to get a job, am I not going to get paid when I get out of school? Is that like the main thing? And so when I was at Wayne State, I worked at the South End, we were still here, and WAYN, it's not here anymore. And I was in radio and TV, and I worked at the Free Press while I was here. And this one of the cool things about being at Wayne State, because you can pull from the community, which is a major market. And, but one of the main things is that you have to know what it is the market is looking for so that you can obviously prepare by the time you get out. And by having us come and talk to you about what is really involved, because, you know, Dr. Um, Padgett now, Padgett, I was going to say the other name, mm -hmm. um, definitely is preparing you for what you need to know in terms of uh, the, the critical thinking that you need to develop and obviously the, the overall about the industry. But when people hire you, this is what they're looking for. Can I read a little bit to you so you kind of know? Mm -hmm. Because if nothing else, you need to know this. It's like, it's almost like... It's like someone's handing you packages, like, okay, you got to know this, you have to know that, you have to know this, you have to know that. But the main thing is you have to know this in order to get the job, in order to secure it. And that's really, really key, besides being involved in organizations, PRSA, you've got to do some, you know. The same thing, it was like when you're applying to go to college, you need all these different things. So one of the things is that you learn these different buzzwords, and I would suggest maybe that you take a... Um, make a list of all the different words that people use over and over again. Uh, she mentioned, Jennifer mentioned buzz a lot, right? Uh, you hear the term social media optimization or SEO, search engine optimization, what's the difference? And all of these terms, whoosh, thank God for Google, right? Or Bing, whatever your preference is, but you can plug those words in. So one of the things that we need to do in order to secure a job as a social media strategist, social media PR person, it's going to change probably by the time you get out of school. But you need to optimize presence in social media platforms and draw enthusiasts, hand raisers, okay, customers and owners in continuous dialogue, which is what Jennifer talked about, was having the conversation to build strong brand connection. Now, I don't know about you, but this word brand has been around forever, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's like it's like the new buzzword now. Everybody's talking about branding. Brand new. You going to go into the bookstore, Borders, or 
Barnes and Nobles now, whatever, and you'll see all these books on branding. It's like, what is this about the brand? What does branding really mean? And so understanding that when you go into interviews, making sure you use the same language and mirror back to them, not what Dr. Patchett says, but you mirror back what they want to hear in terms of real world. Because those are the words that they're going to resonate. It's good to know the theory and all of that, and they want to make sure that you know that, and it's going to be a given that you know that because you wouldn't get to the interview that far. But they want to make sure that you understand the social media un universe and are passionate about the power of conversation and community participation and leadership. Responsible for content creation. That's why everybody needs to get that book. Content creation. That's going to be over and over. I guess in the old days we called it journalism. <laughs> no, content creation is that the whole world of, of video, what Lauren is doing, or photos. It's content creation, whatever you are putting out in the social media universe. And, dis and distribution by the way of brands, again, and social media networks. You integrate with internal business units, all the areas, this is, this is even your department, PR divisions, product marketing teams, advertising, and legal. It wouldn't even be a bad idea if you decide to go to law school, too, because that is a big, big area now with social media being so prevalent and being part of everyday lives, really new, how you handle the legal ramifications, everybody needs to know. And so really having a law degree and really understanding that wouldn't be a bad idea if I were you. I'm 50, so I'm not going to law school. As well as I outside, par outside partners in order to drive collaborative planning and optimization to drive industry-leading social presence. Again, that word optimize, optimization, social presence, those are key words. I will write them down and make sure that I'm knowing exactly what they mean to use them in your everyday conversation so that they come out in a job interview. All right? Those are really, really key. The other thing that um, is really, really strong is to manage and expand social presence and conversation real time. This includes focusing on timely, which is so key, what Lauren is doing, timely posting, monitoring, and responding. I run for clients, I run about six or seven different Facebook pages, and they are not paying me or my team to post things like a day late. <laughs> like, why would they pay me to do it a day late when it has to be done right then? Okay, because the whole thing about PR 2.0 is it's real time and it's talking to people back and forth. The other thing is to build strong relationships online. Now, people want to know, well, how many people follow me on Twitter? How many people follow me? I have 2,000 people follow me on Twitter. I have 5,000, quote unquote, in my personal profile and another 5,000 on the fan. And then another, you know, before MySpace was really big, I think I had like 10 in MySpace. Anybody have a MySpace still? They still use that? I don't use that. Oh my God, MySpace was huge like a few years ago, so you right. gotta really pay attention because I, I've slowly started integrating off of MySpace, what, about four years ago oh, okay. to Facebook. Into Facebook, yeah. But, you know, but it's still, it's integrated in, it, when I post something in one thing, it does go everywhere else. Uh, there's other social media platforms I have a, that about me where you can kind of see where I am, even on YouTube, I think I have so many subscribers and blogs. But the whole point of it is, is that it's not about the numbers. It's about relationships. Now, for people to find me, you definitely have to have some numbers. If I'm going to be talking to people and say I can do your social media marketing and I'm not doing a good job myself, right? right? So that makes a difference there. I did the uh, campaign for the Secret Life of Bees. Remember with Jennifer Hudson and, mm -hmm. and all that? I did that campaign. Uh, Lionsgate uh, found me online. They actually said, hey, this lady is reaching that core audience, primarily our target in the African American and in the Christian market. They said, this lady has a digital footprint in that area. She has an influence. She has a loyalty. She has a following. She has all this. Can you do the social media marketing for that movie? Now, that was one spoke on the wheel. But we did contests. We did screenings. We did uh, trailers. Uh, we did junkets. All of that, but it was the hub of it was like the social media in terms of really getting to the core audience that they wanted to reach. The whole point of it is they wouldn't have even called me if they couldn't find me. Right. And so I do want to say just on the side that whatever personal profiles that you have now, Facebook and even YouTube, make sure they're clean. Yeah. LinkedIn, obviously, I know you're going to keep LinkedIn clean because you figure that's the only thing they're going to check. Obviously, they're going to check everything. So if you posted a video when you were 15 or 16 doing something really lewd and cruel, <laughs> that's going to 
She started laughing like I'm I didn't do laughing. that. You know my mother. <laughs> no. <laughs> Because you just never know. But that's that's just a that's just a side note. I have a teenager, and uh, you know she's playing on it now. But I'm saying, hey, you know, in a few years, this is really really key in, one, in terms of getting a job. The other thing is to focus on in the analytics. Um, the, the whole point of it is that if you don't really analyze where you're going, and I'm not a numbers person, obviously I'm more of a communicator with the words, but it's so easy that even I can do it. In terms of, I'm not a stats person, anything, but if you plug in Google Analytics and learn how to understand it, it really makes a difference so that you can really sharpen your content to the right audience and to know what works and what doesn't. Instinctly, if you do it long enough, you know, but, but the analytics are really the main things that your bosses will be looking at that you have to know. So you can, one of the good ways to really do something like that is to um, go to Google and really take their courses that they have. They have one on AdWords, you can do that now, you can be certified. And what it does, it teaches you all of these things that your employers would probably want you to know anyway. They want you to know the PR portion, but they're gonna also want you to know, if you are certified as a Google AdWords, anybody, everybody knows what I mean when I say Google AdWords, right? Mm -hmm. on the side. If you're certified as an AdWords person and you put that on your resume, that makes you a lot more uh, marketable because it's like, I think it's like eight modules that you'd have to go through. You self-test, it's free, you can do it. And then basically at that point, <coughs> a lot of the creativity comes from actually having to write the ads, um, which we pretty much, all of us, our communicators can, but the, they teach you the analytics part of it as well. Mm -hmm. And so that's really a good skill to have. Uh, I don't know if anybody's ever told you that, but you can go and get certified, and that will just raise your stock up in terms of when you're looking for a job. Because it's very competitive. If you go online now, put, if everybody goes to Google right now and put in social media strategies, you're going to get like a million hits. Mm -hmm. Now it's like they feel like it's the, it's the gold front, like it's the new frontier, like this is a new job for the new millennium. And that everybody's a social media uh, strategist because I know how to post on Twitter and know how to set up a Facebook account. And people are ripping people, people off. You know, you were talking about the auto dealers. You know, the auto dealers, they're, they're car guys. They sell cars. And so people may walk to a car dealer and say, hey, I can set up your Facebook and I can do this for you. And they don't know because if they don't live in that world, how would they know? More than likely, a person will, with a marketing or PR or journalism background is a person that is best suited to really assist someone in social media because the optimum word is what? Media. Media, all right? And then public relations, social, that's part of it. So for someone that says, oh, well, you know, I used to be a dental hygienist and now I'm a social media, <laughs> now I'm a social media strategist because I learned a few tricks on, on how to set up Facebook and connect it to my blog and my Twitter, that's not gonna get it. And so I'm really, you know, in terms of um, my, my main thing is I'm a, a PR coach. I coach people on how to really be their own publicist. You know, the days when we needed a publicist to really promote us are long gone. I figured that out about 2004, mm -hmm. 2005, I started realizing that. And my major clients from my publishers weren't coming as often, but what they wanted, they put the onus on the authors to promote themselves. So I'm thinking like, Okay, so they're not giving me contracts because they want these authors to promote themselves, and then the authors will be like, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> I just know how to write the book. And so at that point, I started taking the authors, um, whose income was a 